Exactly. All right. Now, uh, this event, bringing the people together, the families, uh, the community to celebrate the Prophet, peace be it's upon him, his said. birthday. Is this part of uh, Islam? This is another classic example of people wanting to do good. They want to, you know, uh, uh, help, uh, you know, or, or somehow raise the status of the Prophet by doing something that, you know, they think is good. And it's become such a common practice that when you come and say, "Hold on a sec, something's fishy here," people look at you weird. When you come and say, and this is true, for 600 years in Islam, no Muslim scholar, no major uh, Muslim kh Khalifa, no uh, theologian, scholar of Hadith Fiqh ever spoke about the concept of celebrating the birthday because they had no idea of something called a birthday. The concept of celebrating a birthday is not an Islamic concept. It didn't come to their minds. So for 600 years after the death of the Prophet Nobody in the entire Muslim lands, Islam Muslim, we're not talking about Christians with Christmas, Muslims are not celebrating the birthday of the Prophet. Why? Abu Hanifa, none no, of them. Buhari, Muslim. None no. of them. Because the concept was not even in their heads. Mm -hmm. They didn't warn against it either because nobody did it. Yeah. You understand? They did it. It's like the thing doesn't even arise in their heads that somebody would do that. It's non existent. Then, in the year around 620 something or so, one of the uh, you know, uh, mystical groups, the Sufi groups, one of them, in the fringes of the, of the Muslim Ummah, they decided to do this, this deed. And some scholars say that this act, the thought of it came from celebrating Christmas. That when the Christians show respect to Jesus Christ, then these guys thought that they could do better and show respect to the Prophet by celebrating his birthday. Okay, and so it was started at the fringe of the Ummah in the areas of Khorasan, far, far away. And then it caught and spread like wildfire in the next 200 years. It took two centuries. And in the beginning, most of the scholars were opposed to it. And we have many scholars who actually wrote fatwa against it. Some of them said, oh, this is a really strange thing. It's a bid'ah, it's an innovation. But there's also some good that the Muslims come together and they mention the Prophet and they send salat and salam upon him. And of the people who said this is a very famous scholar, Ibn Hajar. Ibn Hajar al Asqalid, the famous Ibn Hajar. He said, This is a bid'ah. The Prophet never did it. But there's good in it as well because people come together and they mention Allah and the Prophet and they just talk about the seerah, etc., etc. So, others opposed and they said, No, there can't be any such thing as a good bid'ah. This whole concept of good bid'ah doesn't, uh, doesn't occur to them. So, in our times, it's become a huge controversy. And those who affirm it become passionate, those who deny it become passionate, each group accuses the other of this and that. I just have a simple question. Can you outdo the companions in your love for the Prophet ﷺ? Can you do better than Abu Bakr and Umar? No way. Well then, why don't you just stick with their way? I'm not even getting into, is it haram, bid'ah, shirk, I'm not saying anything. I'm just asking a simple question. Isn't it safer? That's all I'm asking. Isn't it safer to stick with the earliest generations and how they love the Prophet ﷺ? When something is so much controversy, you've got so much heated debates, isn't it better to just stick with how Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali anhum, how Imam Bukhari, Imam Muslim, how they did it? And you know how they did it? They followed the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. That's the way to show your love. You know why people love the birthday of the Prophet Because it gives them a false sense of I love the Prophet I'm going to do on this day what I do on no other day of the year. But that's the whole point. You're supposed to love the Prophet every day of the year. And you show that love by following his life and teachings. So every day should be celebrating the birth of the Prophet How? By doing what he told you to do. That's how you celebrate. The, the mercy of the Prophet That's how you show your love. Not by and that's why people love it so much. And I'll be just honest. I don't want to offend anybody, but this is a psychological thing that it's it, it's it's basically it's like a placebo. It makes you feel good, yeah. right? It makes you feel good. Is that oh, I'm showing my love by doing this on this day. I'm going to spend money on this day. I'm going to do that. But you know, for the rest of the year, you do nothing. Well, then that's a problem, isn't it? That's a big problem. And it, 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 you understand why people are so emotional about celebrating this one day, because they feel that if I defend this, I'm defending the love of the Prophet ﷺ. No, if you really loved the Prophet ﷺ, your lifestyle would be in accordance with his. That's how you would love the Prophet ﷺ.